Yes, and a very welcome back on the Touchland. This is on Y254 Bernardo Kumo right here, ready for the interviews. And we are pleased to have Salim Waziri, the founder of Waziri Super Cup. It's heading into fifth edition. We had to talk about what have been the successes of this particular tournament and what does the future hold for this tournament that targets uh, majorly. People draw teams from Webuye, we can say Bungoma County, right? But since the fifth edition, what has been the successes so far, Mr. Salim and Karibu Sanon? the touchline. Yeah, thank you. I've been on this very stage so many mm -hmm. times mm -hmm. with the likes of Tyras and, and my friend Maxwell, now mm -hmm. you. Yeah. But then again, uh, it's just been a tournament that uh, was formed to, to give hope to the hopeless because mm -hmm. the successes so far have been, we have set up a car wash for a youth, uh, a youth group. We have managed to feed over 3,000 needy families and equip girls with uh, sanitary towels. And it's just, it's just a tournament that has actually been there for the people. So mm -hmm. I think this year we want to go the extra mile. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hope for the hopeless? Why so? Uh, because where I come from, uh, I realize the politicians are not doing so much. They have the budget for it, but they're not putting it in good mm -hmm. use. So I said, uh, the buck has got to stop with me. So I started the, the journey and the dream myself. And now, uh, over the years, we have been, it's just not been about football and rugby and basketball, it's just been about feeding the needy and making sure that uh, the girl child is, is taken care of because where I come from, you hear that the stories of uh, a girl is not supposed to go to school because the parents cannot afford sanitary towels. So I decided to step in so that all the girls can, can safely and comfortably go to school. Mm -hmm. yeah. And of course, you picked on three disciplines. Uh, why the three? Uh, I started with football mm -hmm. for the past four editions. We are entering the fifth edition this year. Mm -hmm. I started with football, but then again, onasema, uh, so I onasema mtoto zaliwi na nanza kutembea. Mm -hmm. So nikasema, let me start with a sport or a, a discipline that most people are accustomed to, and I started with football. But then again, as the tournament grew, so 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 I also got a lot of interest from people who play basketball and rugby, and we know. Uh, as uh, in the first edition, the likes of Tyras were talking about here on, on set, they were talking about Western region is known uh, for producing very, very good rugby players. So I said, okay, let me also uh, drop in rugby into the tournament. And that's why, why, why it came into existence and, and became part of Waziri Super Cup. Mm -hmm. yeah. And of course, it's been like, a, has it acted like a feeder for maybe regional teams? Yeah, yeah, because uh, so far, from the tournament, we mm -hmm. have a player who is playing in the Europa League. It's called Colin Sichenge. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, Colin Formally Sichenge, the FC, yeah, right? mm -hmm. he's, he's now in Sabi, he's mm -hmm. playing for Vojvodina. Mm -hmm. So it's a tournament that has actually produced so many players. We look at the number, uh, US jersey number eight at uh, TFC Leopards. He's also gone to Sa Sabia for, in a team called Vojvodak. He's called Hassan Beja. He's also a product of Lugulu FC that takes part in Waziri Super Cup. So, and then again, we have also managed to take, uh, 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 let's say, youths who are talented, but the parents cannot afford to pay school fees, so they have, have been awarded uh, uh, scholarships at ZTQ University. So it's a tournament that has actually been, has actually been a blessing uh, to the people of Bungoma County. Mm -hmm. And of course, where you sit, um, there are the policy makers and then, then people like you. Do you think that the, uh, what you're doing is like uh, maybe outpacing the policy makers, the following later? Yeah, I, I think so, because it, it, it should be done. Someone has got to do it, and, and, and many a times, uh, even when I started the tournament, many policy makers thought I wanted to run for a political seat. But I told them it's not so because someone has got to, has got to be there for these guys, uh, for these locals of ours. So I, I decided to, to start it myself and actually just be, be that beacon, beacon of hope uh, for the people of Abuya Town. And then again, as, as I had said earlier, this year, uh, in partnership with our title sponsor, who is, uh, who is one X bet we want to go the extra mile whereby... Uh, we are going to set up businesses. We are going to provide funds to open up businesses for the for the locals of Buya Town. So we are looking at uh, at almost 20, 20 people who are going to start businesses in Buya. And these are funds that are coming from One Expert, who are the title sponsors of the of the of the Waziri Super Cup. So I think. Uh, I think the, the people of Buya Town should just wait for it because it's going to be special. Mm -hmm. yeah. What's the sustainability of the project? Uh, the sustainability is, uh, I think, first and foremost, uh, what we do is we provide funds that can at least give the business, uh, let's say, five or six months of breathing because 
you cannot you cannot tell me you open a business today and tomorrow you start realizing to, uh, profit is it that that would that would be a far fetched lie. So we told ourselves all these businesses that we are starting, we are going to give them funds at least that can last them as far as stock and running the business is concerned for the next five or six months, so that after that they can actually self sustain. Mm -hmm. So this year, what should uh, what should uh, we expect? Is of course in October through to December. Yeah. Uh, we're going to have, uh, first and foremost, we're going to have 24 teams for football, and then we have six teams for rugby, and then we have six teams for basketball, and then we have four teams uh, for, for the girls' teams. It will start straight uh, into, into the, uh, let's say, the semi-finals. But then again, the tournament will be running straight from the 10th of October to the 31st of December. And uh, they will be played every single, every single Wednesdays and Tuesdays uh, midweek. There will be group, group stage games that will be, will be going on. And then on the 31st, uh, we have, uh, we have uh, a performance uh, from the local artists, namely we have Masauti, we have Willie Paul, we have Richie Vida, and uh, most probably also Tilly Brown will be performing at the finals on the 31st of December. So I think it's going to be a special tournament for the people of Buya Town. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, was, it was in the fifth edition that we wanted it to actually manifest. Mm -hmm. We feel like right now the baby has grown mm -hmm. and the baby is able to walk. So it's going actually to be a very, very special tournament. And we're also looking to to going to going to give kits to all the teams, all the 30s, almost 34 teams that are going to participate in the tournament. Mm -hmm. They are going to get kits and, and balls and basketballs to be to be used in their in their in their in their future future tournaments or future league games. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do you uh, pull resources for this? Uh, first and foremost, I studied it myself. Uh, uh, for the longest time, I've been using money from my pocket. Yeah, nimeomia, but at the end of the day, I, 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 I always told myself that at some point, at some point, uh, the corporates will come in. But from, uh, let's say, from the third edition, from the third edition, I've had uh, well-wishers and corporates, uh, uh, people like Zitek University. Now, we have had, for the past two years, we have had a consistent title sponsor, and it's, uh, it's one next bet. So they have said they'll come in this time, and they'll... They say, as they say, you either go big or go home. So I think this year they want to go that extra mile and make sure that every soul in Obuya town is touched. Mm -hmm. And the collaboration with ZTEC, what, what, what have you found out, you know, when you, you deal with such people who come and fill in the gap or continue what you've been doing? What, what do you discover along the way? Uh, for what I discover is that uh, they, have, they have a structure that supports uh, grassroots football tournaments. And then again, they make sure that, you know, you know, one thing Okumu is, is we are blessed. So many of us are blessed with so many different talents, but many of us don't come from rich families. So the, the balance is, uh, they say, God wasn't a fool when he gave you so much talent, but they didn't give you so much riches. So it makes sure that the, this, this, talent of your, this talent of yours will Will make you will make you now create the riches for yourself, for your for, for your family, or the, for the people you love. So, you find that Zitek understand the fact that most 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 people are so talented but cannot afford the fees. So what they do, they give you that chance. They give you that chance. They pay for your all 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 your semesters, and then you become a part of their system. So by you play football for the school or rugby or basketball for the school, but then again, you go to school for free. So it's a win-win for, for everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so far, there are several who've gone to Zitec, right? Yeah, we have had uh, 12, 12, 12 students who have been given full scholarships at Zitec University. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you have the follow-up? Yes, them. yes, we mm -hmm. do the follow-up. Uh, most of, uh, like, let's say four of them cleared, but then uh, I think eight of them are still part of the system. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when you talk about um, this, this year's tournament being big, you know, and to me it sounds like it will be an extravaganza, yeah. you know, at the end of <laughs> it, all bringing musicians and yeah. all that. But then there's always been a missing link between sports and entertainment. How, <laughs> what, what do you think? What does the future hold? Because we've, like, um, maybe so, been so slow to fuse entertainment and sports. Yeah, and I think I, I've always also talked about it when it comes to, to how the... Kenyan Football Federation has been, or Kenyan football system has been going about it. Mm -hmm. Let's say, for example, you want people at the football pitch. Use, what is the name of this Ohangla, this famous Prince Inda. It's a Kogalo match versus FC Leopards match. Mm -hmm. The gates have got to open up at, at least, let's say, 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. Because it's free entertainment. Mm -hmm. this, these musicians have a cult following. Mm -hmm. People love them to death. So you make sure that Prince Inda is on one side. 
and Richie Vida is on one side as far as the derby of FC and Kogalo is concerned. Trust you me, that pitch, by the time you get to 12 p.m., because many a times when Prisinda or Richie Vida or Steve K is performing or King Kaka is performing, you find out that there's an entry fee that comes with it. But on this particular day, because there's money for it, you say the entry is, for free, is free. You come and watch your favorite artist perform. Trust me, that pitch will be packed to capacity by the time even the game starts. So it, it, they, they, we have to find that balance whereby we fuse football and entertainment because that is the way to go about it. Because you look at the final for Azuri Super Cup, we make sure at 7 p.m. we play the final. It's under the lights. Mm -hmm. We play the final at 7 p.m. and then around 7.30 People settle down because all this, there's all that uh, entertainment. Every, you know, everyone uses everything. There are people for water and people for the for the brown bottle. So we make sure by 7:30 people are settled. There are tents all over the pitch, and then the entertainment can begin. And then you realize there's a way that we have found found out that we have fused the entertainment in the football because by 9, 10 p.m., people are still at the pitch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's packed to capaci capacity. It, yeah, and I think rugby may maybe have been more successful on that front locally, right? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely, because most people have, have uh, rugby, the way they have done it with Kenya Rugby Union, they have found a way to fuse uh, entertainment with rugby every time it's at the, at the uh, RFUE grounds. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, indeed. And now, would you think that the, the tournament maybe has pushed for... Uh, more resources or facilities to, to speak? Has it maybe agitate, helped in uh, pushing for, for less, say, even rehabilitation of some of those grounds in, yeah. in, in Webuye or in Bungoma County at large? Yes, yes, because first and foremost, uh, the former uh, Pan Pepper uh, factory, now it's named Rai, not Rai Factory, the surface was, was terrible. But we have found a way to make sure that grass is replanted. And now it looks like the Ilala Stadium of yesteryears. So I think for, for us going forward, uh, the, the, the biggest uh, vision for the, for the Waziri Super Cup is we want to create a recreational facility where there are basketball courts, there are tennis courts, there are everything. People that want to go to studios and record music, it will be a whole, a whole, a whole unit in itself. So that is, that is our, our future, future goal. In the next, I think, we pray for life because in the next three or four years, mm -hmm. that, that, that recreational facility for the community will be set up. Mm -hmm. What inspires the dream? The vision? Uh, the dream, I'm a football, I played football professionally. Uh, I've played football professionally and then again, once I broke my ankle, uh, my dreams were shattered. So I told myself that God had his reasons why my career didn't go as far as I wanted it to go. Mm -hmm. And then again, I said, through me, I want other players or other kids mm -hmm. to realize their dreams. And then again, my late father used to hold my hand and walk with me to Mumia's complex every time. The likes of Mike Sirengo, mm -hmm. Nick Yahama, those days mm -hmm. when they were playing, uh, Patrick Mugata mm -hmm. uh, when they were playing. So he used to hold my hand every time and walk with me to the stadium. And from, from how he raised me, mm -hmm. he raised me, I'm a, through, I'm, a, I'm a football man through and through. Mm -hmm. So I told myself, I, I've got to do something for the beautiful game. And that's what I'm doing now because it was just a love my father had for me and the beautiful game. And also just me wanting other kids and other kids who are disadvantages financially to realize their dreams through me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Why was it easy for you to choose that path instead of maybe going into coaching or administration? <laughs> <laughs> coaching is stressful. Uh, <laughs> coaching is stressful. I've never... I love football so much, but I've never thought of becoming a football coach. But then again, I just thought it is... I had the know-how, I had the knowledge for the game, and I, 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 I thought uh, I, would, uh, I would build the right infrastructure around me to make sure that the dream is realized. And I also have a team around me. It's not a one-man's job. So I have a team around me that help me on a day-to-day -to, -day to make sure that the dream is a success. Mm -hmm. So you feel like your dream is still going on? Yeah. Through, through other players. Yes, yes. When I watch, when I, when I, when I go to the stadium and I watch them, when I see other, uh, like the likes of Colin Sichenge mm -hmm. playing against Ajax uh, in the Europa League, I think my, my heart is at peace. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, it was not all in vain that I got to break my, my own ankle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And of, of course, this one also maybe uh, demonstrates the fact that there is massive talent. It's, it's like a bedrock of talent down there. Absolutely. And I, and I just, sometimes you sit there and you wonder, you wonder where do, where do, you, you remember the, the days of Reinhard Fabish. Mm -hmm. Reinhard Fabish used to travel. The likes of John Baresi of Diambo are a product of this grassroots football tournament. So you, you wonder where do they want to tap their talents from? Because when you go to those grassroots football tournaments, the Malala Super Cup, the Brian Karamoja Super Cups, 
there's so much raw talent in this in this in in, in, in this uh, community tournaments that can actually be a nursery to some of uh, some of the na to the national team so i think it's a way that i think the also the ministry of sports is something they should embrace and I think the former CS we had started that thing for Talantahela because that is actually where we will get all these talents because you go there Okumu and sit under that shed and watch these kids play and you're like, this is marvelous, marvelous talent. And I, I don't I just think that they have not found an opportunity of their of they have not been given up an opportunity to come and showcase, even go here to these tournaments here in Jericho, wherever it is, Kawangware, mm -hmm. the extreme sports tournaments, and you realize it is it is quite it is quite, it's quite tal so many talents out there, they just need to be tapped. Mm -hmm. yeah. And indeed, the efficacy of these tournaments, many consider them to be one of? Uh, uh, sorry? The, you know, the, the, like the efficiency of these tournaments in propelling talents up, yeah. uh, yet they're just held maybe once in a year. Uh, I, because you see, for, for the, it happens so because it takes a lot of funds to do these tournaments. Mm -hmm. So that's why we are saying if, if, if the government can hold hands of some some people like us and tell us, okay, in a year we're going, we, you can hold it twice a year, let's say in the first quarter and the second quarter, and we're going to give you this particular amount. Actually, it's a way, it's, 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 it's feasible because in one edition alone, from the, you do math, uh, arithmetics from that 10th of October to 31st of December, it's close to 2.5 million, the logistics alone, plus the awards and everything. So I think if the government can hold hands for some of these people that have grassroots fo uh, football tournaments, I think it's viable that can be done twice, twice a year. Mm -hmm. yeah. And maybe many will agree that the, the days when the Olympic uh, the Olympic centers were the biggest avenues that ever, you know, pipeline to yeah. have Kenyan talent out there. And we also maybe, uh, we all did see the results of that. We went to Afcons back to yeah. back and yeah. Kenyans was dominating, you know. But is that the same model that can be maybe reapplied today? Yeah, it can, but I, I, I just think the people that are in charge, the hierarchy, uh, um, I don't miss my words, led by, by our friend Nick Mwendwa, uh, they have actually failed the system because you find that all these players, we have, we have struggled. Like, look at right now what is happening to Arambe Stars. We have failed to, to replace John Momiruri. We have failed to re replace Jamal Mohamed. We have fra failed to, re to, to replace uh, Kachi Kahata Wanyambura. It's because we have not gone deep enough to, to search that naturally, because for number 10, it's more of a gift. Mm -hmm. You find that Jamal Mohammed was too lazy. He's the life of the party. Mm -hmm. But when you, you give him that number 10 role, mm -hmm. he will pick that right pass. Mm -hmm. You'll, people like Francis Kahata, they say he's in discipline and all that. But when the ball is at his feet, mm -hmm. he's a magician. Mm -hmm. You look at John Momwiruri, never, never used to go to training, as most people used to say. But when you give him that jersey, <laughs> he's a magician. So I think we have failed to, look, to find a number 10 because we have not gone deep enough into this estate, so this grassroots football tournaments, mm -hmm. to find that number 10. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where even as a national team we are struggling because there's no natural number 10. Mm -hmm. How mercurial are these players? Oh, they, they, were just, they were just a gift from God. I, I, I Did you play against any of them? I've played, I've played against Malo Malo, uh -huh. and, and, and when you watch him on the ball, mm -hmm. it, you, you, even as an opponent, you're playing the game, but you just want to stand and watch him do the match. You don't even want yeah. to tackle him because he's actually too good. Uh -huh. it's, 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 uh, it's unbelievable. Yeah. It's actually and, and unbelievable. Some say maybe he went into Arambe Stars later on in his life? Yeah. because he was like of a late bloomer. <laughs> <laughs> he was a late bloomer, but I think it was just also the system. Or you find that also the coaches that were there then mm -hmm. didn't, didn't actually appreciate him yeah. more. Because so. it took Kimanzi to bring him when he yes, was in charge absolutely. around 2008. Yeah, because around there. Kimanzi mm -hmm. actually has the eye for talent. Mm -hmm. uh, and you heard him speak yesterday when he said, in a game where you know you're going to dominate possession against Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. Zimbabwe is not an ivory coast that you're afraid they're going to, you're going to ship in 10 goals. Mm -hmm. Why play two holding midfielders, you know, Dada and Anthony Akumu? Mm -hmm. Have a number nine and then have players who are silky on the ball, good on the ball behind the number nine, who can actually create chances. Why play two holding midfielders against Zimbabwe? Mm -hmm. are you, what are you protecting? And maybe we can talk about that, Kidogo. Uh, the false night, there was no, you know, the center forward, most of the balls were coming in, nobody knew, who, there was nobody running for them. Yeah, and, and I also think, in my opinion, uh, the, the federation should invest in departmental coaches. Mm -hmm. You look at other teams, you look at more developed teams, the Ghanas of this world. And uh, my friend here offset, I think we'll talk about it, Altana Obango. Mm -hmm. you, you have, he's a, he's a legend of the game. Mm -hmm. 
you have every department has a coach for it. The number nines, the defenders. In Kenya, I don't think we have invested in that. There's one coach that is going to tutor the number nines, the defenders, the holding midfielders. It, I don't think we have invested in that because you saw yesterday, even in countries that play a false nine, it actually works. It's, it's, it's not the worst system in the world, but it's because we have not invested in a coach who, who nurtures a, a false nine to make sure that this is how the role is played. So actually, I, I, can't, I cannot also blame the players. Someone might say, oh, the players were lazy, but you play Eric Joanna or Duka Bui as a false nine. They have never played there, but it's because even in the national team, there's no coach who has come to them and told them, okay, today we are doing the false nine role. We have not invested in, in the departmental coaches enough. Yeah. Yes, and of course that means that Harambe Stars will have a lot to do on Tuesday when they play uh, Namibia, Namibia in their second match. Yeah, yeah I, I think uh, as much as, uh, again, our coach here, Engine Ferrata, has gone to the presser with a lot of excuses, as he always does. But then again, I think th these, are, these are the games I, I think we're supposed to mm -hmm. be collecting maximum points. Mm -hmm. Namibia and Zimbabwe are no walks. Uh, they, they actually walks in the park. Mm -hmm. when, 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 because I think Z Zimbabwe has never defeated the Harambe Stars. So mm -hmm. when you start drawing against such teams, mm -hmm. then it tells you there's actually a big, big problem. So if we don't win against Namibia, mm -hmm. Uh, then I think our goose is cooked, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I remember maybe one of the most beautiful games I ever watched, the Arambe Stars, in 2008, Kenya played them here at Kasarani, yeah, yeah. at Nyayo Stadium, yeah, sorry, it yeah. was packed to the rafters, and I remember Liel had to come in in the last yeah. minutes as a goalkeeper after <laughs> Origi, who had an outstanding game, uh, got injured yes. in the dying minutes yeah. of the match, and it was beautiful to see it. Hope we also may be missing the 12th man here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we, the government needs to hasten up the process of uh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the fact that mm. even we have become a laughing stock, that uh, for a country like ours, we're going to play our home games and, uh, in countries like Malawi and Uganda is actually a shame. The regional because, economic power. Yeah, it's actually yeah. a shame. And you look, you look at the number of exports uh, over the years. Kenya is also up there with the, with the, with the number of talents mm -hmm. we have managed to export into mm -hmm. European mm -hmm. into European markets. So for us to go to play our, our, our home game at the Nelson Mandela Stadium yesterday, that is a big, big shame. It's a big loss. Yeah, yeah. and Ambole would just look like any other stadium <laughs> a few years ago. In Absolutely. 2011, we were there when Kenya also played them uh, for Absolutely. the 2012, 2012 yeah. qualifiers. So, yeah. But anyway, we hope that Talanta City Stadium <laughs> will size <laughs> in Nyayo yeah, we hope and the Kasarani as well has been yeah. ripped apart. But hopefully that things will come in order. And in a few years, we'll not be having the same uh, discussions today. But well, the best uh, to Waziri, hope for the hopeless, right? Yeah. Why do people need hope? Many capitalize on that. Absolutely. So many, so many look forward to the tournament. So mm -hmm. you come there and it's like 6,000, 7,000 people mm -hmm. at the launch and the final. So mm -hmm. it's just something people look forward to. And then again, uh, before I just, before I, uh, we wrap it up, mm -hmm, sure. uh, I'm also having uh, a varsity, varsity mm -hmm. sevens uh, rugby. Mm -hmm. It's the first of its kind mm -hmm. in partnership with KRU, mm -hmm. uh, my company and my wife's company, mm -hmm. Lily Kwaka, who is actually watching the show called mm -hmm. The Game 360. Mm -hmm. We shall be hosting a mm -hmm. 16 university uh, uh, tournament mm -hmm. at the Egerton University from the 28th to the 29th of September. Mm -hmm. So I also want to urge the people of Nakuru County and universities across Kenya to show up mm -hmm. because it's going how, to be special. How do they list or it's full already? Yeah, it's, uh, we, we are only remaining with three universities and then we'll have total 16, mm -hmm. but it, it, is, it is being embraced because actually uh, for the first time in the history mm -hmm. of Kenyan rugby, mm -hmm. uh, we are going to only have a tournament that is only universities. Mm -hmm. And the winner will be, the winner of the circuit will now be en uh, engulfed mm -hmm. into the national uh, seven uh, circuit uh, uh -huh. by Kenya Rugby Union. And nice and like the one that's been ongoing. Yes, the, yes. The Driftwood, the Dalai Absolutely. and all that. So they'll be a part of, of those circuits. That would be a great thing. Remember, it's also been a, a, a big hunting ground for, 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 for the national sevens, you know, like the whole team that is here yeah. uh, right now. It was all, you know. They yeah. were all scouted during the series, so yeah, absolutely. Because we we need again, we need to give rice mm -hmm. uh, to the injeras and the uh, yeah. bikodemas of yes, this world, yes, and yeah. the hayanges yes. and all that, right? So before we go, though, what's so different in this year's edition? Uh, I I think the difference with was the Super Cup mm -hmm. this year by one expert is just that we have we have increased the number of teams. Mm -hmm. And we are going to use over over six football fields mm -hmm. in the entirety of Bungoma County. So we have actually just uh, 
stretched away wings. That's why we are saying it's going to be special because everyone, mm -hmm. everyone, I mm -hmm. think, for the very first time, mm -hmm. will be will feel like uh, they're actually part mm -hmm. of the Waziri Super Cup. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and maybe thinking about or mulling over an idea to use it as a platform to form one team called Waziri in one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have a team. Uh, <laughs> me and my friend formed a team in Obuya. It's called Obuya Sportif. Uh -huh. uh, it's now um, it's now playing in Division Two in Obuya uh -huh. uh -huh. Town. So. Uh -huh. I think we, we, we get players. You should come cover yeah. that team. It's, yeah. but it's, I, it's, I already it has have teams the, from across the country, uh -huh. even Ugandans and Tanzanians mm -hmm. are in that team. Mm -hmm. It's quite it's quite a special, special team. I already have the invite, and we're looking forward to having you as the tournament draws closer. That's in two months, right? Yeah, yeah. I think in now, it's uh, as we sit here, it's 33 days, uh -huh. nine hours, mm -hmm. and 52 minutes. <laughs> I have it in the my The countdown is like the <laughs> Olympic <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Salim, yeah. for signing up. It's my first day to host you, but it's beautiful. You yeah. know, we want to go on and on. We can talk so much about sports, but it's beautiful. Uh, we wish you all the best Thank in you. your fifth edition of Waziri Super Cup. Yeah. There will be uh, football, rugby, and basketball. It's happening on 10th of October through to 31st of December. Thank Keep you for inspiring me. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. We'll be back with Athena Sobango, a legendary uh, Kenyan uh, football administrator. is here to talk about his plans as well as um, there is a team that is backing. You know, do they have a <laughs> chance this time around? Was it, it used to be called Team Change, right? But then, I know, they say that change in Bakitu Kwaduka. <laughs> we'll talk about that up next. Keep it the touchline. Uh.